In this video, my good friend Jim Bergman from MeasureQuick is talking about volume flow rate of air versus mass flow rate of air. Often we talk about CFM, cubic feet per minute, but maybe we should be thinking about the actual pounds of air that it's moving and why we have to kind of calculate some of those differences uh, under different conditions. So it's a great video. Big thanks to A-Team Adam from HVAC Overtime for sharing this video with me. Always appreciated when you send in these types of videos uh, that are really just excellent uh, learning opportunities. I know you're going to enjoy it. Jim Bergman, my favorite uh, hot air expert, talking about mass flow rate versus volume flow rate of air. Most technicians don't understand this. Almost all air conditioning, if you look at, I think it's chapter one of refrigeration technology, Q equals mass times specific heat times delta T. You guys have all seen this formula. Where does it come from? Anybody know? You, you've said it multiple times. Isn't that uh, relative humidity? No, no, you said it. Uh, is one sensible heat equation is one BTU is what the amount mm -hmm. mass one BTU is the amount of heat to heat what one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit okay so this is literally saying Q is one BTU equals the mass is, is the amount is the amount of air right one pound of water times specific heat of one right times one degree Fahrenheit. That's that's literally what it is. One times one times one is one BTU. Everything we do in our in our industry is about pounds of air. So when you're looking at 400 standard CFM, this is actually 400 times 0 0.075 equals 30 pounds per minute per ton, right? So we're talking about a one ton air conditioner is 30 pounds per minute. We're talking about a five ton air conditioner, 150 pounds per minute going across the coil. All right. So it literally we're talking about the mass of air going across the coil. So when all these formulas, when you're looking at, when you're looking at 400 CFM of airflow, you're actually talking about 400 standard CFM, not 400 CFM. So measure quick is actually taken into account the density of the air. So the air density changes with the uh, air temperature, the relative humidity, and barometric pressure, all right? And what happens is, depending on the type of fan you have, you either have a variable mass flow rate at a constant volume. So a fan moves a constant volume of air with a variable mass flow rate, meaning that if you have a, you can always think of it like a box of air, one foot by one foot. And the fan is going, I'm going to throw 2,000 boxes across the coil a minute. The fan doesn't care what's in the box. The box could be really heavy, dense air, or the box could be really light, dry air. You know, uh, uh, well, here, let's ask this question before I get there too much. Does water in the air, does it make the air heavier or lighter? Heavier. Heavier. Across the board, what do you think, Ed? Uh, I think it gets lighter. It gets lighter. Yeah. Why does it get lighter? You don't think it, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't, but what's no. air, com, air is comprised of what two, um, what's the primary two things in the air? Hydrogen. Uh, not hydrogen. Or nitrogen. Nitrogen, and, nitrogen and, oxygen. and oxygen, which at a molecular level has more mass than hydrogen, which comprise water and oxygen, right? H2O. So as we add H2O to the air, the, the density of the air actually goes down. So dry air is heavier. Whenever we're ready to fan, what I was talking about now, when we talk about this is this is standard air. You guys have all heard of standard air. How much? What? What? A standard. This point zero seven five is under what conditions? Sea level. level. Okay, so this is at uh, zero feet, right? Yeah. At what temperature? Sixty-eight point three. What relative humidity? Zero. Zero percent relative mm -hmm. humidity. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We, I don't know unless you maybe you're in relative. Phoenix yeah, six days a year. Zero. Well, yeah, how do you? It's, uh, you have to be in a very arid climate. So Arizona. just a little factoid: in 1924, the Heating and Ventilating Society actually 
revised their definition of standard air <laughs> to 70 degrees at 50% relative humidity. <laughs> yeah, but this is actually, this is considered standard air. And the difference, by the way, is less than 2%. Let's or, get Gary into some of the phone, right? Yeah, I'm gonna get Gary into the phone for that. <laughs> All right, so whenever we're talking about this with, with MeasureQuick, what we're talking about is, and you're gonna see two things, you're gonna see ACFM, and you're gonna see SCFM, right? So an actual CFM is just a cubic foot, right? It's a cubic foot of air, okay? But it doesn't care about what's in the box. So the, the, the PSC motor we have out there, it moves actual CFMs. So if you have it set for 600 standard CFM, so if we look up here on the, on the board here, right now, that, you have to set that fan on low and it's Got moving, that's on medium. Okay, so we're moving 660, actual 663 actual CFM to get an equivalent 638 standard CFM, all right? So what's gonna happen is that fan will always move that 660 ACFM. That's always gonna be the same number of CFM. It's never gonna change. It's locked in at 660. What will change is the standard CFM of air will constantly be changing in there because as the air density goes up and down, the pounds go up and down. So when you're looking at, in measure quick, when you scroll down to the bottom, you see you have a return air density, 0 0.072, right? So if we're to take the, the 400, Oh, here, let's just do this. We're moving what, 600 and what? 60. 660 standard C, or actual CFM times what, 0 0.072 equals how many pounds? 47.52. Now, if we divide that by 0 0.075 to get it to standard error, what's that equal? 633.6. 633. So right there's your... 660 and 636, basically the same numbers, right? They're just swapping around, changing a little bit as we go. But that's literally what we're doing. So when you're looking at measure quick, you're gonna see always, you always wanna know whether you're moving SCFM or ACFM because that's that way you know if you're talking about mass flow rate or volume, right? So that, that's the difference between the two. All your fans, when, and this is this what, is what threw me for a loop when I got into doing measure quick was I was trying to figure out the mass flow calculation for calculating airflow, right? Because we said before, if we know cubicles mass times specific heat, we can figure out and cubicles mass times specific heat times a delta T. So in this case, if we were to say 12,000 BTUs equals what mass would be 30 pounds per minute per ton, right? Times specific heat of 0.24 times delta T. Well, let's just solve this for a minute. So we take 12,000 divided by 30 times 0 0.24, 27.5. 27.5. So if all, if all the energy went to converting the water vapor to water, or excuse me, if all the energy went to cooling the air, well, if 12,000 BTUs cooled down this 30 pounds of air, right, it has a specific heat of 0.24 BTUs per pound, then it would change the air temperature to 27.5 degrees, right? But typically, what's the typical weight and sensible split on a machine? How much, if we design it, what's the typical weight? What do you think, Ed? 0.75. So if we're to multiply this times 0.75, what's that equal? 20.625. 20.6. Magic 20 degree delta T comes from. That's where the magic 20 degree delta T comes from. I still stole this off your website six or seven years ago. And yeah. I have it line by line. <laughs> yep. So this literally comes down to if if you know, so if you figure this out backwards, if I know what this is going to be, and I know what this is, I can calculate how many pounds of air are going across the coil. Now here's a weird one for you. Anybody know what the inverse of the specific density is? So you've all seen this if you look at a psychometric chart. So you got psychometric chart going up. You got your lines. You got lines going this way. Anybody know what those lines are? Relative humidity. Mm. No, relative humidity or curved like yeah, this. Okay, that ball. And these are these these lines going <laughs> vertical or dry ball. Mm -hmm. These lines coming down at an angle. Wet ball. Not wet bulb. Well, there are wet bulbs, but they're more of a. These are really steep angle. The wet bulbs more like this. Oh. So is uh, density. Uh, you're close. Specific. 
a uh, volume. specific volume. Yeah, so a lot of times you'll see like this point here, you'll see this is 14.7, right? Or in this case here, if we were to say at, at zero degrees relative humidity, at 68 degrees, right? 68 degrees Fahrenheit, so this is our 68 degree line. This line of specific volume would come across here, this would be 13.33. So this, this spot here would be 13.33 feet cubed per pound. Why is that ringing a bell? What's the inverse of it? Well, this is over one, right? Okay. So now take the inverse of it. One divided by 13.33 equals what? Oh. Pounds per foot cubed. <laughs> so if That's I great. if I take if I take the input, if I can figure out the mass going across the coil or if I figure out the specific volume, I can calculate the mass or mass of specific volume. They're interchangeable. Just got to take the reciprocal of it. So literally all the stuff we're doing. This is why it's so important to understand mass flow and and or understand at least what measure which measuring because you're going to have guys. What's I heard of a CFM, but what's an ACFM or an SCFM? Well, ACFM are actual CFM, SCFM are standard, a standard meaning it's got associated with a weight. An actual is just a cubic foot. A standard means a weight, okay? So that's why I can say that, that a certain amount of actual CFM are equal to this many standard CFM. That's all we're doing. So now, this, this, this thing gets more interesting because what's the latest motor technology we came up with? ECMs. Now, ECMs work off of two things. They work off RPM and, anybody know? Static pressure. Torque. Torque. Very good. That's exactly the word I was looking for. RPM and torque. So now, as the air density changes, as the air gets lighter, what happens to the amount of torque that's required to actually push the air? It goes down. Wow. As the air gets heavier, goes the torque up. goes up, right? So an ECM motor, it's, it's chucking pounds of air across the coil. And it's saying, oh, this air is getting a little lighter. So guess what it does? It speeds up to actually move more actual CFM across the airflow to get the standard CFM the same. So an ECM, when you set it for 400, it's 400 standard CFM. So this is where it gets tricky. Sometimes you're going to hold your capture hood up or, or a measurement device up, and it's going to read, like, let's say 440. And you're like, oh, the airflow is a little high on this, 10% over. Maybe not might just be your air density is low, right? So again, this is why we're, we're doing all this stuff in MeasureQuick. There's a lot of complicated formulas in MeasureQuick, but we do it because this computer can do it. And if the computer can, can do it, why, why, why not do it, right? So we don't use any standard air formulas in MeasureQuick. This is our, what's called standard air formulas. Ed uses those in manual, manual D, manual J, manual S are all standard air formulas. We use the ASHRAE fundamentals um, psychometric calculations, which are moist air equations or Hyman-Wechsler psychometric calculations. But it's just, it just an important concept to understand is that we're cooling the mass of the air, not the volume of it. And, and when we look at, if you were to ever order an evaporator coil separately, they say how many pounds of air you're moving across the coil. And now you know how to tell them. You just take your required airflow times 0 0.075 for standard air, and you can tell them the pounds. Now, if you had really hot air, you go to a psychometric chart, and you could you could you could find out the temperature and the relative humidity of the air. Temperature, relative humidity, or or you could find out the dew point and temperature. Or you could find out the wet bulb and temperature. Or you could find out the wet bulb and relative humidity. You could plot on a chart. Then you look at the lines of specific volume and you just take the inverse of the specific volume and you get the density. So they're just interchangeable just by, uh, just by taking the inverse of it. Big thanks to Jim. Big thanks to Adam. Big thanks to all of you who share. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.